fellow internet, my name is Max7238, and welcome to the final episode of The Stairway to Heaven. And now we face the boss, Griffiths himself. Before I hit this button, this particular enemy and one other have a lot more weapons on them than you can see on their body. I think almost double what you can see on their body. So if you think this is going to be like Rengoku 1 if you're coming off of that playthrough, you're horribly, horribly mistaken. Now, to get started. The reason why I'm using the optic camouflage here is so that he cannot adjust his aim like a lot of the other AI will try to do, because he hurts. Secondly, it allows me to use my High Roller Remix without breaking the uh, camo. What do I mean by that? Well, if I could knock him over here without him using a High Roller Remix on me. It means that any other weapon that I use that's actually designated to a particular body part is going to break camo. However, since dodging technically doesn't break camo, and this is technically dodging, it doesn't break camo. Kinda dirty, I know. But, ow. When you get hurt that much from one hit by this guy and you can combo most of his hits together, you don't take any chances. So I guess if all else fails in your strategy, you can always try mine. Like I said, a little cheap, but it works. He gives us Griffiths.
Unlike in Rengoku 1, the story does not change every time you go up. It is the same over and over and over again. However, this game does something that Rengoku 1 does not. And now I'm going to show you sort of what that means. They weren't kidding. You now have three blocks of a new tower to explore. Each block has its own purpose. They're sort of a challenge mode. Something where you can leave behind all of these weapons that you've gathered and all of these stats that you've built up playing the same story over and over again and experience something both old and new. And I don't exactly remember what each one is, however, they open up a new help menu that will tell you before you actually go in. They don't tell you that this is here, there's no tutorial message saying, hey, check the help menu for, like, anything updated, no, it's just kinda here. <laughs> so what is heaven? They answer the question. The bottom line is that each of them are blocks, your goal is to clear each block, you clear all three blocks, and something extra happens. Heaven A will remove everything you have. Actually, they have the parameters below in plain language. So here you go. Your beginning stats, everything reverts to normal. You don't get to take any of your accrued elixir skin with you, any of your skill points, any of your basic stats that you've upgraded, nothing. When you melt down, your stats return to normal. Your skill points are retained, like your gains are retained, and that's important. Uh, but your weapons and your elixir skin all disappear as well. When you actually clear the whole thing, 
your stats will return to normal. In other words, if you've maxed out your health and your defense and your slots and everything, that, that all goes back to normal. Like, you don't have to worry about having to re-upgrade anything. They don't do that. They're not that bad. It's a temporary status. However, any elixir skin and skill points that you gain will be retained. Any weapons on your body at the time, I do believe, are, um... Yeah, the like new items are placed in the item window if there's room. Uh, if there's room, meaning like if you haven't filled up, I think like 15 pages or something. I tried to do it once. I can't remember what the limit was, but it was pretty high. Um, and yeah, you're basically unable to do anything except for save your game in the first block. In the second block, your stats return to normal, but you can still use all of your weapons. So what it becomes is sort of a you need to gather up the kind of weapons that you know you're going to need and then head on in and then immediately start trying to kill things off and get enough elixir skin to give yourself enough slots to equip your proper weaponry from there well we'll get to that when we get to that the last one i'm not even going to bring up the explanation because it's so simple you go in you can't use any of your weapons that's it like there's nothing more special beyond that however that is where you get the most powerful and the most rare weapons in the entire game. Every single item capsule in the game drops in Heaven's Sea, and they drop on particular floors in a theme. So if you run into the first room and people are using pistols, you can probably expect to get the most powerful pistol in the game at the very end of the floor, at the like other end of the room. Um, they form and set like rooms and series of rooms, so it's blocks. So you have like one to the left and right, of the original room and then like three ahead of you. If you clear uh, the rooms to the left and right you might get the like second version of that particular weapon. If you clear the room ahead of you you might get the third version. If you clear the room ahead of that you'll probably get one of the versions that has a special effect on it like what these break bunkers have. Where if I hit somebody with that explosion I actually drain the energy from their equipment. You usually find that like in the room right before the ending. The last room in the sequence will always contain the most rare and the most powerful version of whatever that is. So if you really like multi-hit swords, you will go into that particular block, Heaven C, and you will find the floor where people are using multi-hit swords, and you will go all the way to the end, and you will do your darndest to make sure that you actually uh, fill up that overkill meter, and you get that weapon. You will usually only get one copy of each weapon. So what that ends, ends up meaning is that you're going to need to run Heaven C multiple times if you want to have multiple copies of these very powerful weapons. Finally, the last several floors in Heaven C, there's no theme at all. It's just there are enemies that are probably the most powerful in the entire game with the rarest weapons in all sorts of combinations. You will be absolutely destroyed in those floors if you don't know what you're doing. However, in those last several floors, you have the chance to drop what is probably the most overpowered weapon in either of these games. And it's not even a weapon, it's a headgear, sort of like my optic camouflage, where you activate it, and it forces overdrive. Now, I didn't use overdrive too many times uh, throughout this playthrough. It's, it's pretty rare without that particular headpiece. But what it does is it means that you can joint combo any of your melee weapons, you can fire any of your ranged weapons indefinitely because your ammo does not decrease, you do not gain any heat, and you are completely invulnerable to damage and any status effects. This is something you can force with that headpiece. What's more, just like any other piece of equipment, with those like, you know, energy gain, heat resistance, custom effect, you can upgrade it just by having it equipped on your head because it doesn't do damage. So just like optic camouflage, just like my jammer head. You kill enemies with it equipped, it will level up. What that means originally is you can't really use it, because it only has one charge to start with. Um, and it overheats automatically when you use it. So you kind of have to trick it. I showed off at one point, because I didn't really have to use it, I'm, I'm a melee build, I didn't really have to do this all that often, but you can keep on your sublimator cooler, and then use it, it'll overheat, the sublimator cooler will uh, get rid of the heat, but you'll lose the item. Instead, right before you use it, you switch to an energy pack. Use it, it'll be 
it'll still, like, overheat, but it will reload, and it'll still have that single charge. Then you can just head on in here while you're already in overdrive, switch to the sublimator cooler, and the sublimator cooler will, like, reduce the heat so you can use it again when your overdrive runs out. Just like this optic camouflage up there in the left-hand corner, it does have a meter, so you can see, and it does not last as long as the drops of overdrive do. The drops of overdrive are actually better. Um, it's just that they're so rare that they're not reliable at all. This is reliable. So that is the main story and the main content of Rengoku 2 Stairway to Heaven. We've reached the top of the stairs. So next time you see me, we will actually be heading into heaven. So thanks everybody for watching. What comes next is the challenge mode of this game. And if you intend on watching it, I would like to warn you here that it will probably be very monotonous. However, we'll probably have some of the greatest battles we've ever had in this game. Um, that's just the nature of the blocks. So, hope you enjoyed. And if you stick around, I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching.